Invincible Season 2, Episode 2. So we're halfway through the halfway point of Invincible Season 2. And if you don't know what I mean about that is that this season's kind of being cut in half. They're going to show the first four episodes uh, this month. And then the next four, the last four, sometime I think early January or February. We don't really have a date, but it's in the beginning of the, the next year. So, two episodes in, two more to go, until we have a little bit wait until the rest of season two. So, let me give you my thoughts on this one. I know I'm a little bit late. Um, the third episode is about to premiere tonight, and then tomorrow morning. So, I'm just going to quick my quick general thoughts and uh, recap of this episode. So, this is a good episode. I really enjoyed it. There's a lot, a lot going on. It's kind of a... You know, we had a setup episode in the first episode. This is also somewhat of a setup episode. There's a lot of things that happen that are important, but it also kind of comes off as setup because some of these things won't really matter until later on, which is fine. Uh, Invincible, the, the show, it's based off a comic book that's 144 issues. Uh, there's a bunch of big storylines throughout the run. But, of course, there's smaller stories within it that flesh out the world and everything that really make the world of, Invin of Invincible interesting and something that people really enjoy. Because, uh, like I said, it's only 144 issues. There are some spin-offs, but it really feels like a fleshed-out world. And uh, this episode kind of helps you see this world, you know, a lot of portions of the world and everything like that. And a lot of aspects, or some aspects, that are going to become important. And, of course, we follow our characters, uh, Mark and Debbie, who are still suffering from the events of the first season. Uh, Eve, who is trying to do her best. Amber, uh, we see a little bit of William this episode. And, uh, you know, the Guardians of the Globe. So, overall, I really enjoyed this episode. I think it was fun. It's great. I don't think there's been a bad episode of Invincible. But this is a little bit of a slump coming off of the first episode, which might, you know... You know, some people might say it is a little boring or boringer than some of the other episodes. But I think that's fine. You know, like I said, not every episode is going to be a crazy one. But it's still a fantastic show. Um, so, I really enjoyed this episode. 8 out of 10 for me. There's a lot of things that I, you know, if you've read the comic, there's a lot of things that <laughs> you know are coming. And you really enjoyed about this episode. So, spoilers. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm going to talk spoilers quick recap like i said there's a lot that goes on and i'm probably going to forget some of it or forget to mention some of it right now because i'm just trying to do a quick one to get this video out because i just got behind on doing this so uh the beginning of this episode is mark's graduation you know he's finally graduating high school eve amber and william are there uh, or <laughs> he is not there mark is off fighting dog se seismic at the washington monument and Eve, Amber, and William are just like, where is he? He's going to be late. And Eve's just like, this is why I quit being a superhero, because you're always late to things, <laughs> uh, which is kind of funny. So we see Mark beat Doc Seismic in his uh, Motonauts, Motonites, I forget what they're called, and uh, he quickly makes it to graduation, and he's able to graduate. From there, we see the crew at Eve's uh, big treehouse place, and they're talking about what they're going to do over the summer. William's just like, I'm going to watch trashy reality TV. Eve's like, I'm going to help people repair things in Chicago. Amber's just like, oh, I'm going to re relax by the pool and everything like that. But then she starts switching it up. She's like, well, no, maybe if I have time because I have to help at the shelter. I have to help with this campaign. She has a lot going on, so she's not going to relax whatsoever. And Mark, he's just like, well, I'm going to do my job and... Do whatever Cecil tells me to try to help people because he's very dedicated like in the last episode you know he is upset about everything that happened and he feels like it's his, his fault with you know his dad and him kind of destroying Chicago or a big portion of it and all the chaos they caused throughout the states so he's still trying to make up for it you know he has this mentality that he needs to really really help people so he's kind of like on serious mode right now so from there we go over to where do we go over <laughs> uh, okay so i'm just gonna be you know drifting pieces of the episode i'm just not gonna go in order because then i'm just gonna get confused what, what goes where so eve's journey in this episode is that she goes to chicago 
and she ha starts helping repairing the buildings, which is really awesome because, you know, her power really makes it easy. And the people of Chicago are really happy. They're like, yes, you know, it's taking forever. You know, all these this red tape and everything slows down the construction workers, and it's a real mess. So we're really glad you're helping us. She also turns a vacant lot into a park, uh, which the people absolutely love. So Eve's just feeling good about herself. But she gets a call from her mom uh, that things aren't so well at home. So she ends up going home later in the episode and sees that they don't have a lot of food and they're struggling. And it turns out that her dad lost her his job after the incident in Chicago because the company he works for, their uh, main business or office was there, was destroyed. So he ended up losing his job and he's working at Burger Marts. And he was just like, you know, you shouldn't have to work this job, you know. So she ends up filling the fridge with food and creating a gold apple that they can sell for money. But her dad's kind of a jerk and he's very prideful. So um, he doesn't accept any of that stuff. So later in the episode when Eve returns, it's all in the trash and everything. And she's very upset. She goes to talk to him. She's like, yo, you know, I understand how it feels like to lose your job. And she's like, she's like, I'm not trying to take anything away from you. I understand how hard you worked to provide for me and my, or me and mom. So you're just on hard times and I'm trying to help. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, take your masculine, you know, your pride or anything away. And he gets angry at her because of course he always does. And he shows her a newspaper that the park she builds in Chicago ended up sinking because there's a sinkhole there and that's why the city never built anything there he's like you and your kind always think they can do whatever you want but you know this is why we have rules and you guys just don't want to follow them and this really upsets eve and she takes off and uh we don't see her for the rest of the episode i think this is the last time we see her but this is eve's plot points this episode um mark like i said he's on serious mode trying to do everything he can so he gets sent on a few missions this episode he goes to midnight city to fight someone who is acting like Darkwing, one of the original Guardians of the Globes. Uh, he goes there and he finds out that it's his sidekick who has these powers to go into shadows and everything. So Invincible fights him, which isn't very hard for him because he's kind of like a normal guy in an exosuit who can... He can't really hurt Invincible. But he brings Invincible into the Shadow Realm. I believe it's called the Shadow Realm. <laughs> or I'm just thinking Yu-Gi-Oh. And uh, um, he grabs him... Or, Invincible grabs him. He's like, I'm not going to let go of you until you take me out of the shadow realm. And they get into a conflict where he's just like, you're just like your dad. Uh, or earlier, he's like, you're just like your dad or whatever. You're evil. And when they're in the shadow realm, they hear these monsters coming. He's like, don't let go of me. You wouldn't let them eat me. And he's like, it's just like you said, I'm just like you, my dad. Which is the big conflict still in this, you know, in this episode and this season that he's afraid that he's going to be come his dad and a lot of people comment on it they make comments about what happened in chicago and everything and they're like oh we're sorry we're sorry and mark's just kind of like it's it's fine you can tell it bugs them a little bit but it bugs them more that people keep bringing it up like uh, there's a part where his mom um says like you're not going to become like your dad you don't have to worry about it and he just gets upset and he's like then why did you bring it up you know if i'm not going to become like him why are you saying this you know <laughs> so it's kind of upsetting him that he feels like people kind of in the back of their mind at least think that he might become like his dad so anyway he uh um darkwing lets him out of the shadow realm and he knocks him out and i uh, cecil apparently or we assume comes to pick him up after mark leaves and then the next big thing that happens for Mark is that he goes to, uh, well, he has a small date with Amber, which I really like. They're setting up the relationship this season. But he goes to Atlantis because uh, after his dad killed Aquarius, the king of Atlantis, the rule is that he has to go down there and marry the queen. So he goes down there and they're like, oh, we don't have that rule anymore. You just have to defeat this monster by combat and then you'll be good to go. And he's like, okay. So he, this little cute monster pops up and he's like, this will be easy. And he goes over there to try to fight it and it's very comedic and everything like that. But uh, <laughs> it turns out it's just a smaller piece of a bigger monster uh, called the Depth Dweller. So he starts fighting it and he's doing a decent job, but it's also beating him up. And it does this roar that really hurts uh, his ears, which is the weakness of the Vulture Mites, um, which is used against them later throughout the series. Especially with, uh, well, I'm not going to do spoilers, but it's something that's used against him. So this is a good thing that, or a bad thing, <laughs> assuming on what side you're on, that Cecil ends up learning this episode. 
But he ends up saving, uh, because the monster gets loose and starts attacking the people, he ends up saving them, uh, which makes them even. Um, but then Cecil gets upset at him, he's just like, don't, you know, I told you to leave after you started finding this monster. He's like, don't disobey me again. And Invincible's like, okay. But then Cecil sends the voice recording of that roar to R&D so they can weaponize it. Like I said, it's going to be used later. So uh, the show ends for Invincible and Debbie. Uh, Debbie is at home. Uh, there's this drawer that doesn't close all the way that she's been having issues with uh, since they rebuilt her house since it was destroyed in season one or messed up. Um, and she's just been frustrated this entire episode. You can tell she's upset and angry still about everything that happened season one. So she gets home and she, you know, she's frustrated at this door not closing. So she starts smashing it and smashing all these wine glasses and she falls to her knees. And after she does that, Mark happens to walk in behind her and he just sees how upset she is. So he goes to comfort her. And she just puts out her arm like, don't touch me kind of thing. And you can just see it in Invincible. It kind of breaks his heart. And it's a very sad moment. You know, you can see that she's going through all this stuff. And it really sucks for her and him. But, you know, that really had to hurt for Mark. But then she puts her arm down. And he hugs her. And that's, like I said, where the episode ends for them. In the comics, um, Debbie, you know, she starts drinking a lot. And there's a point where she blames Mark. Or she, she says something like, it's your fault that he left. You know, she blames him that... Oh, your dad left because of you and everything like that. She's just kind of wasted in the comic. So, but it's kind of like this moment. I don't know if it is or not, or if the, you know, she's later going to get drunk and do that. But this is kind of her darkest moment where she just kind of rejects her son for a moment and just kind of, it's very heartbreaking. Um, uh, two last things, the Guardians of the Globe. Guardians of the Globe, um, they fight the Lizard League and Shape Smith ends up joining them. He's the Martian, um who came from Mars and pretended to be the astronaut. So he semi joins them uh, this episode. So the Guardians are expanding more and more. Um, Rexplode and Duplicate kind of break up. In the first season, he cheated on Eve with Duplicate. But now uh, Duplicate, well, she says they weren't an item, but uh, it seems like <laughs> Rex thought they were. Uh, either way, she ends up uh, hooking up with the Immortals, so that's the new pairing <laughs> this season. <laughs> and it just absolutely breaks Rex's heart. He's going to have a hard season, I guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, we set up two big things again for the next, probably the next episode. The sequence on Mars, like I said, uh, Shave Smith, he came to Earth and he left an astronaut there. And all these little weird tentacle star spider things connected to him, so... He, he became, or they're controlling him, and they're uh, able to communicate now. So they kind of conquered Mars and are making their way to Earth. And then the big end credit scenes is Angstrom Levy. Uh, we see him in an alternate world with a Mark who's chained up and captured. And he's just like, I'll help you if you let me know what happened to you. And he lets him know that uh, in this world, his dad was killed. Uh, they used this experimental neutron bombs that took out or destroyed half of Europe, but ended up killing him. Uh, and they eventually caught Mark because they wore him down and eventually he fell asleep and they caught him. <laughs> so that's how he got caught in this world. So he's like, okay, thank you for letting me know. And then um, an alternate version of Cecil and Donald come in. <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing here? He's like, well, I'm not your problem. They're like, whose problem are you? And he's just like, sorry. <laughs> and he's just like, uh, um... Uh, his problem, but not his problem. His problem, or a different version of him. And he ends, ends up leaving, and that's the, the credits thing for us. Um, you know, showing that he's out there and gaining knowledge to how to defeat Invincible and everything. So like I said, quick recap. Uh, really enjoyed this episode. There's a lot more that I didn't mention, but I just don't want to make a long episode. Um, great stuff. I'm excited for tonight's episode. I'm excited for the rest of the season. If you watched it, what do you think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was just too many plot lines in one episode? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.